Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss about this another important topic in the compute network, which is medium axis sublayer. So, the medium axis sublayer apparently we calling as a MAC layer. The medium axis sublayer apparently we calling as a MAC layer. So, when discussing about this data link layer, so in the data link layer, we having as a two sublayers are there. One is logical link control layer as well as MAC layer. So, what we discussed in the previous sessions, so all these are comes to this the logical link control layers. Uh, we we'll go for these different kinds of protocols, uh, data link protocols, or noisy protocols, or HDLC, or PPP frame format. All these things comes to this a logical link control protocol. And this another important sub layer in the data link layer, which we calling as a MAC layer. So in this session, we are going discussing about the medium axis control layer. Apparently, we calling as a medium axis sub layer. So what is medium axis sub layer? So this medium axis sublayer, the protocol is determined to is go to the next on multi cases channel, which is belongs to the sub layer of data link layer. So sub link layer of data link layer we calling as a, a medium axis control layer or medium axis control sub layer we calling as a MAC layer. So in this one, in this protocol based upon the the medium axis protocol and the medium axis sub layer. So we are going discussing about and we are going to access about this multi axis communication channel while establishing the network architecture path. So in this medium access sub layer, we are going to using this various LAN connections. So these LAN connections, many of many of the LAN connections is accessible this multi access channel as based for this communication. So what kind of access we are using that we go for this a one to one communication channel, a single server and single client value. And we go for this single connection and multiple client value. We are going to establishing that kind of communication channel that we calling as a MAC subler values only. We are going to access the multi access channel for this communication. And in this channel, how we are able to analyze that one, how we are able to access that one. So when discussing about this one, in the when accessing about this channel value, which we calling as a respect to channel allocation. So what is channel allocation? When we assign the multi access channel in the medium access control sub layer, we are going to use in this multi channel communication. So in the multi-channel communication, we are going to access the n number of channel allocation. So this channel R, which is a single channel, is divided into n number of multiple channel that based upon the number of users can able to use that one, can able to order that one using for the specific task values only. If n number of users are available, if n number of channels are available, so we divided the channels into equally sized sub-channel. Uh, so each user assigned one portion. For example, we having as a 10 MB bandwidth of one channel is there. So we are divided this 10 MB into 10 different channel value, 10 different structure value. We assign 10 one one channel into each of frames value, each of the respect to client value. So here we divided into equal sub channel value. That is the advantage of this channel allocation value. But if we are going to allocate the channel value, if n number of users are increases. So previously 10 MB is just shifting into 1 MB. So we given 10 different MB packets and we are sent to the respect to client's value, but still the number of users are increases. So, so number of users are increases or number is just uh, either maybe increase or decrease. So this should be don't vary at time. So in the situation, we go for this a FDA mechanism. Apparently, we calling as the a frequency division multiplexing mechanism. So the respect to frequency, what are the bandwidth we have that one? What kind of frequency structure we are using that one? So we implementing this FDA mechanism, we calling as a frequency division multiplexing mechanism that can be used as a simple and efficient channel bandwidth allocation type. So based upon the number of user increases or maybe decreases, so does not vary the time based upon the FDA mechanism. So we are going to simple and efficient way to allocate the channel to the a number of customers. So how we are allocating the channel allocation problems? There are two things are there. So if we go for the static channel allocation value or we go for this dynamic channel allocation value. Mm -hmm. Static and when dynamic value, we have n number of allocation problems we are facing that one. So that we are discussing in this sessions. So when we go for the static channel allocation. So what is ch static channel? It should be maintained the statical manner values only. While allocating the channel from the users, we have to follow the classical or a traditional approach values only to allocating the number of channels. So each and every single channel among the multiple competing users so we are going to implementing this FDA mechanism. We calling as a frequency division multiplex mechanism. So in this one, if n number of users are there, so that bandwidth is divided into n equal size of portions. 
so each user each user may use and may assign one portion value only but here what happened here what kind of issues were facing that one so when go for each user having as a private frequency band so there is no interface between the there is a major advantage but while assigning the private frequency band based upon the frequency structure that is a difficult problem in static channel allocation and similarly in the dynamic channel allocation in a dynamic channel so there are possible assumption modes are there so what is the first one is station model so if n stations are if n number of customers are available if n stations are independently produced the frame value that is probably the predicting the packet value which is the interval of id value which means the arrival rate of the new frame which may be a constant value and the station model should be a constant for the respective arrival rate from the framing structure value that we calling as the respect to station model value and similarly in the single channel assumption value if the channel allocation channel allocation of all the station that should be either equivalent or the information can be sent or received based on that channel values only so that also a one of the major drawback to allocation the station value which is equivalent to the our structure value which is sent and receive the station value and uh, next one is a collision assumption if multiple customers are there multiple frames you assume that one instantly these two frames are overlapped what happen the collision may occur so if any collisions are occur if any collisions occur so that may be error should be occurring so both the frames are must be retransmitted so we are taken care about this while the channel allocation to the n number of customers the frame must not be overlapped if any frame must be overlapped based upon the time wise direction the error may occur so we are go for this retransmission of this enter frame that is a possible error and another one is time what is the time factor here based upon the time factor only we divide into number of slotted values in the sequential manner in the continuous manner and similarly in the stations so a station can sense the value whether the channel is busy or channel is available when you see this one in the multiple access protocol there are dedicated link between the sender and transmitter between data link layer which is sufficient value if there is no dedicated link presence most of the channel access are continuously transmitted so that is a one of the issue if the n number of channels is continuously transmitted if the station is busy it may chance to get the error again we go for this retransmission of the issue so here multiple access protocol to decrease the collision and to avoid the crosstalk or to avoid the interference and avoid the retransmission process we are going to implement this number of protocol that we calling as a, a random access control protocol a control access protocol and a channelization protocol so in this one we are going to use in this aloha protocol and a carrier sense multiple access protocol with collision avoidance and collision detection mechanism and reservation pooling and token passing protocols as well as frequency division multiple access time division multiple access as well as code division multiple access so we are going to implementing all this protocol to avoid the collisions to decrease the collision to avoid the interference or cross talk between the layers so we'll come one by one what is the protocol so what is aloha protocol aloha protocol is designed to learn but also it also impl implemented and applicable for the shared medium services if multiple stations are there to transmit information from the same same station so we can easily accommodate the values we can able to share the medium values but this is the lead to the collision so data being the collision should be happens so in this situation error may occur we initiate the retransmission process so in this aloha protocol we have two things are there one is pure aloha protocol and second one is a slotted aloha protocol we have two protocols are there in the aloha structure we calling as a, a pure aloha protocol as well as started aloha protocol or slotted aloha protocol so in this pure aloha protocol so just allow every station to transmit data when they are having as a data to be sent so here what happen for example i having as a source is there i having as a destination is there the source is want to transmit information to the destination value so it has to initiate the information so every station has to initiate the information transmit data whenever the source want to send the information but here what happen every station data is transmit without checking the receiving position so if the data channel is we need to check data channel but what happen here the source is send the information without check the station station of or status of this receiving section in the state station of this receiver 
this resource station status either may be a busy or free if it is free there is no issue the data should be received but it is busy still the data is transmitted in this pure alaha the data should be lost because the resource is busy the data should be lost so that kind of checking is not possible in this pure alaha protocol that leads to the collision of the data frames so in this one we are getting this acknowledgement arrived at the receive frame if it is okay then data is received so if not data should be collided which means the frame should be damaged we reinitiate the when we retransmit the entire frame that we calling as a pure alaha protocol when you see this one here we having as n number of pure alaha protocol n number of status are there so information is transmitted but what happen in this domain in this domain we have to check about this what is the status of the value if the status is busy or status is free if status is free there is no issue the information is transmitted we get the post acknowledgement but if the status is busy we get the collision should be happen so the throughput of this aloha protocol what is throughput here maximum transfer rate we calling as a throughput the maximum transfer rate of data transmission from source destination we calling as a throughput analysis so in this throughput analysis of this pure aloha protocol is maximized frame the uniform length values only and this aloha protocol the uh, the ratio value which is g into e power minus 2g value which is the the status ratio value the signal to noise ratio value is so which is g into e power minus 2g value so here g in the sense the maximum number of signal is transmitted to the frame value which is almost 18% of this total data transfer frame values only and second one is slotted aloha protocol so in the slotted aloha protocol when you see this one the frames are the each and every frames are check the status of the value and individually transmitted there is no collision should be happens when you see this in previous value here the collision may occurring here but here there is no collision well individually the information transmitted so there is no collision value because of that reason so because that is the throughput is very high in this slot allow protocol value so here this should be all the frame should be same manner the same size value and based upon the time factor we equally sized our slots value the data is transmitted from one frame to another frame value and here the nodes are start to transmit based upon the frames value of the beginnings of slots value and the nodes are synchronized value and the throughput is also much more high compared to the slot pure aloha protocol value in the pure aloha protocol we having as 18% value but in this we having as a 37% value and the s yes ratio the previous one we having as e power minus 2g value but here we having as a g into e power minus g value only so that is a major advantage of this slotted aloha protocol in the slotted protocol we having as a 37% time slot is empty because the success rate is very high and the collision rate is very low in this slotted aloha section so when see this one in the graphical representative manner and the the calculation the traffic allocation of this aloha protocol value is very high when compared to this pure aloha and slotted aloha value with respect to the packet time size value that is the s ratio value which is throughput ratio value with respect to my time packet services value and what is the difference between this pure allow and slot allow protocol the one comparison of this time start factor what is time start factor in the pure allow any station transmit data at any time but here we are when you go for station transmit data so at the beginning of based upon the time slot factor only we calling as a slot allow we are beginning of this any respect to time slot factor values only in this pure aloha the time is continuous and not globally synchronized but yet time is discrete and this should be a globally synchronized and the variable time rate which is the variable time should be 2 into transit time value here is single transit time value and the probability of successful transmission here is g into e power minus 2g value but here is g into e power minus g value and maximum efficiency 18% but here we having as almost 37% of values only and to the number of collisions this data should be right that does they, it has to be having as a reduce number of collision value in the start of the, the number of collision is half of the doubles the efficiency value that is a major of the difference between this pure allow and slot allow value so i conclude this session in this session we discussing about this a max sub layer what is the uses of this max sub layer and what is max sub layer and what is the uses of this max sub layer and what kind of protocol we are using that one and how we are going to implementing of this protocol for 
two protocol which we calling as the aloha section in the aloha section we discussing about two protocol one is pure aloha protocol and second one is a slotted aloha protocol we discuss in this session in the upcoming session we discussing about this a csma mechanism in the csma mechanism what is csma we calling as a carrier sense multiple access mechanism so in this sense we discussing about how to detect the errors which means the carrier sense multiple access with collision detection value as well as collision avoidance value we discuss in the upcoming sessions thank you